Okay guys, we're going to light ourselves a rocket stove. So what we do is we put uh, our four fuel sticks and they're going to average half inch square. Maybe one's a little bit wider and narrower, uh, whatever. They're just going to be small sticks. So we got a lot of surface area, not a lot of wood that's very difficult to light. And this stick that's thicker at the back, I'm going to put the thin end in first because that's going to allow me to have an easier time lighting it. And then I'm going to feed all these sticks in as they burn down. What we'll do is we'll get our tinder going up top. And then we'll just stick in some sticks and twigs and pine cones. As they burn down, guys, that's going to create uh, quite a bit of energy, thermal energy. See all that smoke coming out? That smoke will go away as soon as we have the hot efficient fire. And then all that smoke becomes fuel. Right now we're wasting it because we don't have enough heat. As soon as we have enough heat in there, the smoke becomes fuel. And you just watch, as the flames rise, the smoke will die down. It's awful hot and very stinky. But it smells like cooking with fire, which is something that I love to do. Now I just poured on a bunch of fuel in that chimney, kind of like uh, something that you might or might not do yourself, your choice. But the more wood that begins to heat up, the more that the wood produces what's called wood gas. And wood gas is a flammable fuel called smoke, or you and I call it smoke, the scientists call it wood gas. And here it is being produced in abundance. If we have more oxygen, this smoke becomes fire instead of smoke. So I'm gonna add some oxygen just so you can see what that looks like. Okay, look at that. Smoke has mostly been eliminated by comparison to flame. And that's because all it takes is a little bit of oxygen to make a fire burn cleaner. The design of this stove is such that as it gets hotter, and all my sticks down here, already burning, guys. Okay, and that's my primary cooking fuel. I'm going to keep that close enough together so it can share its heat, but far enough apart so it can get oxygen in between. And now I'm up and running. Guys, if I had a, a pot or a pan, it would be on there and I'd be cooking right now. Okay, see, slow burning wood fire down there. You can see my sticks are burning. The wind is blowing, of course, today. Got traffic driving by. Okay, whenever the wind disrupts the vortex through the stove, we get a little bit of puffs of smoke out of the top. Let me show you the top, uh, where we're, we have now a smoke-free fire. Look at that guys, we've got just little wisps of smoke from the abundance of, of too much fuel in the chimney still burning down and from the wind blowing and affecting the airflow through the stove, but essentially this is operating in a smoke free environment just very very brief period of time after I lit the, lit the fire. Quite a bit of kindling still in the chimney. That's something that I overdid, but I wanted to demonstrate for you that uh, 
you could start with just a whole bunch of fuel you get a bunch of smoke but the minute you have enough heat and oxygen that smoke goes away and that was a very visual demonstration you could probably use half as much kindling for a very secure start the other thing you can do is use these pine cones just drop them right down the chimney they create a fantastic kindling as well but again if you have too much fuel for the amount of heat and oxygen then you're going to have smoke okay let's cook something Okay, took me a little while. I have to go in the house and get a pot and some water and scrounge up something. I didn't mind cooking real quick. Some top ramen noodles. Gonna go ahead and uh, let that water boil. And we're gonna see how long that takes. So the start time on the water is 4.55. You know, I just shut off the camera and I already have steam coming out of the water. It's uh, I started the water at 4.55, it's 4.56 guys, and I've already got steam coming out of the water so I'm just going to leave the camera on because I thought I was cutting out the long boring process of bringing the water to a boil, but uh, obviously <laughs> it's neither long nor boring. The water's ready to boil already. It's probably boring on video, <laughs> but I want you to see how fast it can boil. It's only two cups of water, guys. That's uh, 16 ounces. It's half a quart because uh, that's all the, the ramen noodles need. But uh, I am at nearly 5,000 foot altitude, so uh, boiling water without the pot skirt, with the wind blowing at this altitude is actually pretty impressive, and it's going pretty fast. show you the sticks how they're burning down we just keep feeding them in it is pine from that two by four so it is burning pretty quick but it's giving me a good flame and good heat that's uh, on its way to bringing this water to a boil already I just show me a little bit as they burn down and that's all there is to it Now again, I'm not anywhere near maximum power for this stove. The maximum power is 23,900 BTUs. We commonly just call that 24,000 because what's 100 BTUs, give or take? But uh, 23,900 BTUs maximum power and uh, I'm nowhere near maximum power. I'm like at half power. Uh, but I do most of my stuff at half power because maximum power is just unbelievably hot. Uh, it's the kind of heat that in this situation would actually overheat the plastic handle on my pot. It's best if you're boiling a big stock pot or you're cooking with a wok, some Asian food that requires a high heat, then you go up to maximum power. You certainly want to go, you don't want to go to maximum with small cookware like this. And so I've just got enough sticks for about half power and uh, that suits me just fine. I can hear the uh, 
the uh, material, the water, trying to go through a state change to a boil. So we are really close. In fact, uh, I've already got boiling going on in the form of uh, small bubbles. Go ahead and see if I could show you that. So we are boiling already. And let me check the time here. Five o'clock. So uh, it took four minutes, <laughs> uh, four or five minutes, five minutes to, uh, to boil that water, two cups of water. Uh, I've done a quart in 10 minutes at this altitude, so that's about right. If it was linear, which I don't know much about that, uh, you know, whether it is or isn't. But in this case, guys, if you were trying to conserve fuel, you just go ahead and pull those sticks out. And by the way, what did I, you know, it's top ramen, so once you just dump the soup in there, you just leave it for five minutes and the noodles are going to cook under their own heat. You don't actually have to uh, completely cook all the noodles um, on the stove. You can cook them off the stove under its residual heat. But if I wanted to save this fuel, I could pull it out and stick it in some sand or dirt or water. Uh, I don't like to use water because then you got to re-dry your fuel before the next meal. But basically I've got boiling water so my ramen is effectively done. But let's say I want to cook it on the stove for maximum speed and I don't have to worry about my fuel so much. I'll just go ahead and add my noodles. Find myself a relatively clean stick. Stir. Of course, this relatively clean stick could be a wooden spoon. <laughs> or it could be, uh, you know, uh, any kind of cookware that I've got. Any kind of spoon that I have. In my case, I don't mind a little Boy Scout seasoning in the form of some wood. And, uh, well, maybe I should care. There's a little bit of paint on this wood. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> relatively clean stick we said now the noodles of course are going to be done in three minutes i don't have to keep it at a boil that entire time like i said that's optional and then i just add my flavor packet of course i'm not a fan of the the noodle flavoring because it has monosodium glutamate not healthy for you at all it's an excitotoxin but that again is another lesson for another video on another day at another time thanks for watching if you need to get a rocket stove for your preparedness needs or for easy, cheap cooking in the outdoors, go to afterburnerstoves.com.